Hello YouTube, round seven of the National Open. I was paired with a man who lives like 20 minutes away from me. We go to, we go to the National Open in Vegas and I'm paired with someone who I know and, and, and you may know him, Daniel Marmer, Superior Daniel is what we call him because he beats Daniel sometimes. Uh, his supplement was 1800, but his live rating was 1600. So I gain absolutely nothing for this game. Like I get nothing out of it. So it kind of sucked. Like I play someone who lives where I live and they're like really low rated and I don't get any money. But um, I asked Daniel Herman, I was like, what, is, what does this guy play with the white pieces? And I, all I was told is that he plays 1d4 and he likes to attack and that he kind of attacks in every game regardless of whether it's warranted. And I think this kind of helped me a lot. I kind of expected a Jobava London based on what I was told and that's what ended up happening. I didn't prep anything. But the nice thing about the Jubaba London is it's actually kind of a worse opening than the regular London because it's like black can just play normal moves and be better. And that's not really what, what you want with the white pieces, in my opinion. Um, Bishop f4, e6 is good. And the only improvement I really made, the only thing I, I knew knowledge I have going into this based, you know, from my last Jobava London game is that it's actually like pretty good a lot of the time to pin this knight because this knight is misplaced. That's all I know. So knight b5, knight a6, defending this shit. e3. And I learned something very cool here. I remembered like, I know I've learned this before and I didn't remember it. So I was like, ugh. I remembered that so like you do there's something wrong with playing c6 in this position. For some reason, but I had no idea what it was, so I ended up playing it anyway because it made sense to me. And I was trying not to do the thing that I did in the other game, where just trying to remember things based on like figments of my imagination. If it's a move that looks good to me, that should be that should be a good enough reason to play it. I should trust my own judgment. So I played c6. So the cool thing about it is so better would be to play bishop e7, and only after they play bishop e2 do you play c6. So that now you can play c5 in one go, and they had to waste a tempo to take your- If they want to take your knight, they have to waste a move, which is something I didn't understand. So that's cool. That's something I'll remember next time, why you play bishop e7 first, and only after they play bishop e2 do you play c6, or bishop d3. So, yeah, that's that's like actual learning. Um, c6 is fine, and then, and then I thought this was a threat. Apparently it's not. Well, I should play queen b6, but bishop b7 is also fine. I just played knight b8 because I was like, I don't know, that looks weird. That looks weird. So knight f3, bishop b4. Again, best move. It gives it dubious. I don't understand. I'm going to take that away because it's the computer's favorite. Um, and the thing with the, the Jobaba London is like the knight, like this is not how you're supposed to place your pieces. Like you don't have very much center control. You didn't play c4. Why not pin? Why not? I mean, it's not like you can break the pin because your bishop's already outside the pawn chain. So bishop d3, c5 is correct, and black is just doing well. So takes on c5. If he doesn't take on c5, if he just like castles or something, I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure I could play c4, but I, I wasn't like... I was decently sure c4 was... was was theory. So I'm glad I didn't have to make the decision. I think knight taking on c3 is also good. He takes on c5. Bishop takes c5 is not ideal because then there's knight b5 and then I have to play knight a6 again. So instead, this pawn's not going anywhere. So I went- again, it says dubious. It's not- it's just fine. It's a fine move. I feel like I'm lying to you. You want to take this with something other than the bishop, so the two best moves would be knight d7 or queen a5. And I went queen a5 because I was like, ooh, ooh, tripled pawns. That'll be that'll be a fun little positional imbalance that I can use against my weaker opponent. Knight d7 definitely is a better move, though. So queen a5 castles, takes on c3, takes on c5. And um, I thought this was a fantastic position to put someone in who loves to attack. Because he's not getting- he's not getting an attack. It's just not going to happen. Uh, the only thing I will say is that, like, this b-file might be annoying, but I thought that b6, like, and then, like, what? What's the problem? My- my light square bishop can be developed in several ways. So, black is just doing just perfectly fine here. Rook b1 is okay. Castles. 
95, and knight d7. Uh, notice how I'm not taking on c3. Uh, if I take on c3 here, I think he has, like, bishop d6 might be pretty strong. I think the computer had something stronger. The computer likes knight d4. Oh. And if I castle... Well, yeah, this is just happening. It doesn't even matter if my king's on e8. I'm just getting a tempo on the queen and then playing knight c7. I don't remember. I think both of those reasons may have popped into my head, but mostly bishop d6 I didn't like. So I play knight d7. And now queen takes d3 is kind of a threat. Because I'd like, I'd like to force him to trade off his, I think, his best piece um, for kind of an inactive one. And uh, he played queen f3. And I was like, oh, here comes the attack that doesn't exist. I was waiting for it. So my opponent is going to attack me. Um, I take on c3, double attacking here. He takes on d7, knight takes d7. Taking with the bishop would be pretty horrible, I think, because, like, queen g3 and then, and then my position is quite bad. I need the knight here to defend the dark squares. I thought this was very aesthetically pleasing, how well my knight... Uh, controls the dark squares where I don't have a dark squared bishop. I thought that even though I'm lacking a dark squared bishop, my knight is very good. So the position is still just like equal. And then he played queen h3. And it's black to play here. Um, I played this move like pretty quickly. Oh, I should also say something funny that happened. Um, for like a split second here, I like I got up and I walked away and I came back and I didn't see the pawn here and I was like, oh shit, did I hang my queen? And I was like, oh no, there's a pawn. That's something funny. Yeah, f5. F5, it just shuts everything down. And e5 is pretty easy to prepare from here on out. And now black is just like better, because I just have a big center and the bishops kind of suck, honestly. And I'm up a pawn. So f5, the attack is over, but my opponent does not get the memo. Uh, bishop g5. Knight c5 is good and normal. Just just doing things. And I will say that my time manage for this game was uh, fantastic. Very based and good. So by move... When my opponent played bishop g5, he had 14 minutes left, and I had 30. Which on move on move seventeen is ridiculous, but I kind of this game was actually really helpful for me to realize something um, about myself. I kind of felt like I was playing like a weaker version of of me because he was spending like a ridiculous amount of time on moves that he shouldn't be, and then he tried to create something that wasn't there, and he's in time pressure, and he's just he's you know, and um. When you're spending that much time on simple moves, you kind of look a little bit weak. Like, you appear weak, and it makes your opponent more confident, and it made me feel confident. I actually got up and I was walking around the whole time. I did something where, uh, like, if he was taking a long time with a move, and I came back, and when you come back, they kind of feel like they should make a move. And if he's not ready to make a move, then I start walking away right again. And sometimes what they do is they'll make a move, so you'll come sit down again. And so I was just kind of enjoying, like, being on the other side of it for once. But anyway, knight c5, bishop e2. It, it, it just... Again, I don't have a whole lot to say about this position. His queen is very bad. His, his bishops aren't doing anything. My center is good. I'm up a pawn. My queen is active. My knight is fantastic. My king is safe. I, I just... The black is just much better. So, knight e4. Putting the knight up in there. Bishop e7, rook f7. And instead of playing bishop b4, which is normal, my opponent played rook b3, which just fails to queen d2, and now both bishops are attacked. And to be fair, he had like he had like um seven minutes here. But what it's just what which what which of those moves is justified spending that much time on? I don't I don't know. So I take on e7. And I simply just go back to f6 to kick. This bishop is probably going to be lost as well. My opponent was playing a, um, playing on for a long time. 
Rook c7 is good. I'm trying to just activate shit. Takes on c2. Takes on a2. And the only thing he's playing for is the back rank. Because these two squares are covered. So if the knight moves, then that's the only thing he's hoping for. So I just play bishop d7 and cover my back rank. Like, it's just... I have no problems. Rook c2. Takes, 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 takes. And then here, I, I was still thinking, like, a decent amount on all these moves because I wanted to find, like, the coolest win. So it's black to play. Like, I think there's a lot of cool, flavorful wins, but I, I'd like to see everybody's style bleed through. So Giga Chad Lad likes Knight H5, which is third best. That's only minus 11 for black. Bishop G4 is what I play, which is minus 13 in the best. Um, Knight E4 is only plus 9. Terrible. Uh, Rook C8 to C2 is Pavlikic's style. Plus 10. Having your bishop on d4 would be nice. Do you mean e4? Well, anyway, I thought for a while I thought bishop g4 was, was the most accurate here. Knight takes g4. And I actually missed rook h3 was saving him. And so I kind of assumed, like, oh, maybe I did make a mistake in this position. Maybe knight g4 was stronger. Maybe rook g4, maybe knight takes h5. But it's actually not. And I got kind of frustrated here. Because I was, like, really pissed off he was still playing on in this ridiculously lost position. And at this point, I'm like, ugh. Okay, I'll throw this move in, I'll defend h7 and attack the rook. And yes, there's a lot of really, like, there's a lot of wins, but none of them are, like, spectacular looking. And then I was like, what the fuck am I doing? And he resigned. Like, that's that's always a nice feeling. Just just to cut out all of their hope. And just, and just you know, this is like forcing a resignation. So, yeah. This game was I don't I don't know. I I I just think it felt nice to finally outclass someone because I hadn't done that at all in the entire tournament. Like not once. So I finally did, and it was someone from my state, so it's like, ugh, Colorado player. But um I don't know. The Joe Baba London is just not very good, I suppose. But there you go. Those are all of my national open games. And now we can we can can finally move on with our lives. <laughs>